you must be a resident of that particular subdistrict to be able to represent that constituency. Are there any volunteers? All right, well, maybe next month we'll have someone who would like to join us. And I'd like to welcome Elizabeth Wright, who's all here tonight. So we do have eight members present, and we do have a quorum to continue. Members of the audience and people online, I do have to explain that we are uh, doing a walk around tonight. Our Bolello videographer is not here this evening, and they normally will videotape the meeting and broadcast it later on. We are going to be recording the meeting tonight, and it will be available online at the Neighborhood Commission office, and it will also be viewed um, on uh, on level at the regular time that uh, that is generally broadcast. So we will have some television coverage of this meeting at a later date. We're going to be moving on with our agenda. And we usually start with status reports from some of our service providers. Is there anyone from the Honolulu Fire Department with us tonight? Anybody online? All right. Is there anyone from the Honolulu Police Department here tonight? All right. Or water supply. I'm sorry, we have a question. Yes, Judy. Yeah, I, I was wondering if I could report an incident perhaps that was reported to me, you know, for the fire, I mean, for the police department. Or is it? No. Can we cover it under community announcements? Okay. Then? Thank you. Uh, Board of Water Supply, is Iris Oda in our online audience? Okay, then we're going to be moving on to the Kaiser Complex Schools. And I do know that Mr. Guru is here tonight, and he has helped us with the public address system. Thank you, Mr. Guru. Good thank you, Mr. Guru. Thank you so much for supporting our community. I'm here to re represent the Kaiser Complex of Schools. Shannon Tappan Guru, I'm the principal here at Iowa Elementary School. I speak for all six of our schools. I'd like to give you some updates. We're very pleased to announce that our partnership with the Highness Schools and support for them has continued, and we have sent over and we're working directly with the Lahaina Luna High School's librarian uh, to be able to donate things, and they distribute to the feeder schools, all of the elementary schools and middle schools, uh, to support. So we've sent over uplifting letters, uh, monetary donations uh, for, for them, and uh, they're happy to receive all the letters. Very appreciative. So we'd like to open it up to anybody who would like to participate in that. Drop it off at any one of our school offices. Let me send those letters over. Just some updates from Kaiser High School. Athletics are really exciting right now. They're really kicking it off this fall season. And so our football team at Kaiser High School has made the playoffs. Congratulations to them. And they will have a game this Friday at Kaiser High School Stadium. And that's the uh, 7 30, and it's also a TV game. So good luck to the Cougars. You can buy tickets online and submitted a link to uh, a purchase ticket so you can attend the game. Also, JV Softball is in the playoffs during the semifinals for the whole game, challenging the other line tomorrow. And then also, volleyball is in the first round of playoffs and challenging the Lilibula Pat Kalani also tomorrow. So athletics is one thing, but academics is another. As a high school is a leader in global education. They recently hosted 300 uh, students, high school students from Hokkaido, Sapporo. It was a great experience. They performed and as their students also performed for them at an assembly. And at the same time, I'm, I'm not sure how they did this, but they were went through a rigorous evaluation for the International Baccalaureate. So every five years they get evaluated. And so uh, verbal feedback so far shows that they will continue to be authorized. So that's great news for us. So every one of our schools is authorized and continues to be authorized. If you want more information on any of their international baccalaureate programs, we have the links uh, submitted for the minutes. 
coming up uh, through the Kaiser High School PTSA fundraiser, we have uh, the night market put it on. And so this will be on Veterans Day night, November 10th. That's going to support the project. One special thing about Kaiser High School is that they offer, just like other schools, the Hawaii Seal of Life Literacy. So students can graduate with a special recognition saying that they are bilingual. So Kaiser High School qualifies their students by having six years of taking a world language. And that starts at New Valley Middle School. So three years there, three years at Kaiser will qualify them to have a seal of bioliteracy. So very proud of that. All of the students participate in this world language program. It's just wonderful. some other things going on in Valley Middle School. They had a band jam, so I said next a lot for the great movement and entertainment. Everybody came out, it was great. And they also got authorized in their middle years program. They are looking forward to positive feedback, but they also feel like they were reauthorized. So it's great news for them. We all are bringing back in some way all of our, our normal activities, like our fun fairs and Kamalo Kijas had there, so they want to say a big mahalo to the public. Also, Hawaii Elementary School PTSA is having our Harvest Fest this Friday, and also our PTSA Rome Sale on Friday. So please come out and support our schools. Great cause, all the money goes directly to our students. Thank you so much for letting me present. Questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Gu from our board members or people from the audience? No questions, Mr. Gu. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thanks for your support. And before we move on, uh, I'm remiss in not introducing our neighbor assistant tonight, uh, Jeffrey Jones. Jeffrey is handling the um, participants online and uh, people who are participating online. If you would like to address the board, please use the hand raised hand icon. And uh, when you are recognized by the chair, we will uh, unmute you and let you address the board. Thank you. So moving on to community announcements. Are there community announcements by board members or members of our audience? Hey, Elizabeth. I just want to remind everybody uh, that every second Saturday of the month, anything out of Yellow Wetland is open to the public. So you can come on out and learn or along the way. And as soon as the rain starts and the rainy season is really upon us, it's going to be a lot of fun because we start doing native planting. Um, the other thing is we've picked off Haidi exploration. So that means that Haidi Malva lands are now going to have opportunity to get out there and do trail work. We're starting this Saturday, actually. And um, the rainy season starts, we'll start with planting out there just as well. So connect with us at directors at hawaii.org. And I'm more than happy to share all that information with you. Okay, Carol. Hi, thank you, Chair, board members. I'm Carol Jackson with uh, Hulinawa Canoe Club, and I just wanted to announce the Phoebe Coast Run is coming up on November 19th, which is a Sunday before Thanksgiving. Uh, and you can, if you want to register, you can register at uh, Um And I also wanted to alert the community to the traffic that morning. Um, it's a Sunday morning, start at about Five o'clock with people, five o'clock in the morning, people um, parking at Costco and the bus is taking them over to Sand Beach Park. The road between Sand Beach Park and Panama Bay is completely closed from 6 20 until the last run of passes, which is about 7 45, 8 o'clock. And generally, it's completely off the road by 8 30. Early riser, a bit of a track advisory. Carol, just one clarification. Um, is there one lane uh, that's going to be closed off? There is one lane. There's Patrico up to Hanama Bay. Hanama Bay is, and, is and it is open. But between beyond Hanama Bay, all the way around until um, the 
a number of days so I didn't even understand each part that is completely closed. So really the only um fully completely blocked off is the um Coco Hip Chew complex, which we have talked with. And you can still get into Sand Beach Park on the Mako Okay. Any questions for uh, Carol and that announcement? Thanks so much, Carol. Next announcement. Hello, Marie. Anne Marie. Hello, my name is Anne Marie. I'm with all of the way.net. And I just wanted to update the board on the Not and I Hold of Europe project that you've seen along the way. Okay. We'll be doing all of the we'll be doing a formal presentation to the community or to the board, excuse me, somewhere into the new year. Um, but our goal is to complete at least four of the email to see them all. They honor our fish pond along this waffle, and the community has been so embracing of the project, and um, they keep yelling that they want more. So I remind them we're volunteers, we go by donations, but our main thing was to get people understand the history of our fish ponds and to honor and celebrate of Nipole because we don't have a fish pond if we don't fish. And so as our we started at I look for our last mural you've seen him with Mama Louie the big one that's to honor her little girl Mama Louie. We have one more um larger mural but not as large as those and then we'll go back to smaller places where people have Murals. Um, so again, I just wanted to thank Chair Mayor and Chair Burkhart from the board who is so supportive of the project and to all our elected officials and to the Department of Transportation. Um, we really did reach out with, with everyone and to I really want to thank for more time into our presentation. It would not be done without the whole owners who allowed us to paint on their walls. They were so happy to curb the people dealing with for years. And then secondly, as always, we must always take our phone number with us. Any questions for Anne-Marie from the board members or members of our audience? Thank you very much, Anne-Marie, to all of your volunteers for the great work they're doing. It's lovely. All right, uh, come on up, Joey. It's, on, it's already on. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Joy and um, I am the Vice President of Mid Pacific Road Runners Club. And I'm here to thank you, neighbors, for what you're volunteering for us this evening. And to let you know that every year on January 1st, we have a little road race in our community. And it starts in Kalama uh, Valley Park. By Kailo Park Street, and it starts at about 6 a.m. in the morning. That goes up quite high drive, up into the back road, so we are doing a home road. And there are about 175, 200 runners uh, off of the sidewalks. We have quite a waste department, a lot of volunteers, and we do this every year. I just wanted to appear to inform you of that. I have a course map for you that I'll present to you for your so. so yeah, to let you know that we appreciate you for all these years of support that we have done. You have been with us for a lifetime. So, any questions? Just thank you very much for allowing us to be a part of your community and we do appreciate it. Any questions for Joy about this New Year's Day run? No questions. Okay, uh, other community announcements. Uh, Judy, you had something that you wanted to share with the community? This is about an incident that happened. Would it be under public generated? Okay, we're going to be moving on to public generated issues. Uh, so, Judy, come on up and uh, share what it was that you wanted to share with uh, HPD. What had happened was that someone relayed to me this incident. Um, 
they had parked in one of our shopping complexes. And I guess she was very um, engrossed in her home. She went into the store, she came back out. She, she had parked near this big white van. And she didn't realize that on her passenger side door, someone had wrapped a plastic bag onto the handle. She, she said she didn't realize it until she went to her next destination. Someone told her about it. And she's, I don't know how true it is, but she, she says there are incidents like this that are happening, happening where people are being abducted. So what she said usually happens is, usually it's female, goes to the car, sees the package, goes and tries to untie the package, and then they're abducted. And she, according to her, she's, she's seen incidents like this happening on the internet. So I just wanted to make people aware that when you park, especially if it's not a high traffic area, to be aware of your surroundings, and even if there's something suspect like a package like that, just go get in your car, lock the door, and Judy, thank you very much for that. Um, issue to our attention. I think it's a good reminder to everyone in our listening audience to be be very cautious about your surroundings. Yes, her. Do you know if she reported it to the police? No, she didn't. That would have been very helpful. Yeah. I guess she was just so scared. So thank you for reporting. Are there any other uh, public generated issues? Come on up. Uh, it was just brought to my attention about a 5k fundraiser by the EV Post. My mom is the founder, one of the original Save Sandy Beach members of the coalition. There was no community involvement. There was no anything. It's the LNR giving out permits once again to things that they should be protecting. Um, the KEB Coast, located where this run walk is going to take place on, on Saturday, is the home of Ibi Kukuna, which is our ancestral bones, our native plants. My mom is scattered there. It's a sacred Vanapana. Vanapana in Hawaiian is a, a place that you go for peace and tranquility. I'm all for exercise, I'm all for running a judicative post. I, I exercise, but this is just the wrong place. And um, it's probably too late to stop because the permits have already been you know, given out. But we need to nip into but It cannot be annually. At that place, I will be there on Saturday morning. Um, it's I think there's about 27 to 30 participants physically going to go into Kaidi, um, and there's uh, some virtual 60 virtual. But um, it, it's disheartening to think that that the LNR isn't doing its job. To our, you know. It usually takes place on the North Shore, and so this is the first I'm bringing it over here to Kaibi. But again, it just kind of slipped through the cracks, and nobody was made aware of it. And so it's a big concern of mine, especially when I try to preserve what little moment left. So, thank you. Malia, uh, this is the first I think that we've heard about it. And uh, so it's scheduled for this Saturday, you so, said? Yeah. Uh, as you can see from our earlier uh, announcers, people generally bring these activities into the board's attention so that we can alert the community to what's going on. And so this is not something that we've heard about before. So I think we have a couple of questions 
because we'd like to probably follow up. And Elizabeth has a question first. Thank you, Malia. Thank you to your mom. She's done. So um, I was just hoping that you might clarify earlier we heard about like, the proposal land law, and you're referring to a 5K that seems to be actually on the land in extraordinarily close proximity to Kikapuna and an entire area that's currently under restoration. That you two end up having the turtle come and have the nest, and we have the yellow big sea and the monk seal. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, I'm not familiar with the Ibi Kapuna. I have heard about it, and I've always thought that that area, like the said, of Kaipana, I'm very disappointed. I do want to mention that I, when I heard, out, heard this, I reached out to the organization and asked them to consider moving to 5K and all of the Namaka lands, because Namaka lands can sustain that sort of an activity. And unfortunately, um, it was uh, not, not um, it's too short of a notice. What I did learn, which was interesting, is that though they are having some people physically on the land, um, it, it was allowed up to 100. And when I think about the word precedent setting, my son is not right now. Imagine where you're feeling. So thank you so much for coming. And hopefully, more, um, you could talk about this more with DLNR and to make sure that we're all on the same page as it relates to the care of those lands. And that's currently in the restorative state, and more importantly, protect the people. So, thank you so much for the heart. Well, yeah, if you could uh, uh, email me who the organizers are of the race, you might be able to send some notice to them. That, um, um, I also emailed their contact, but I haven't had a response. But, and they have a contact on their. On their but I will uh, email you all the information. Yes, more information you have, the better. Thank you. Uh, other people who want to speak to this issue, come on up. What is their website? So the organization putting this on is Oahu Search and Rescue. Now, I have nothing against Oahu Search and Rescue whatsoever. They're a wonderful organization. Um, they are the, it's a fundraiser, of course. Um, but it's just not a good thing. Hi, Carol Jackson, um, as a community member. Uh, I did hear about this Trail 5K, um, what I would call a bomb area. Um, and, you know, we had thought about doing a trail run as part of the Ely Coast Run and then reached out people like Anne Marie and um and was really educated on how sacred the land is and by one of the people that now work at TLNR. And so I emailed TLNR. Um but she was not aware of it and she tracked down who gave out the permits. Um and they have offered to meet with us, but if they could only meet via Zoom this week and I said I really want to meet in person. So I mean I guess it's by hate happen, but but I did get an answer from them and again they said because it was so small that you know, once you start opening up permits without community so, um, support or even um community yeah. community yeah. knowledge, um it is precedent setting and it's not the DLR is there to protect our land. Not to monetize our land. It's disheartening. It is good. So, Carol, um, I know that you were interested at one time using that area. Um, understanding now with what Malia has shared with us, uh, moving forward, you know, I would hope that the messaging would be to DMNR not to allow any sort of activity like that in that area. So, as the um, founder and coordinator and organizer of the Kaidi Coast Run Wall, um, do you support that? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think we need to do some backing up with DLNR because they didn't see a difference between our event and that event. And our event is on the road. We only involve DLNR because we're, we finish that long road of day, which is DLNR. And we don't go in that area. So, yes, I 
communities who need some education from the community to deal with our. All right, other comments? And Marie? I, um, this is just me now. Um, what I've got to say earlier, I was saying I was coming to the this board has always been awesome about protecting cultural and national resources um, and being educated. And I've always appreciated that as a community member. Just so you know, when we deal in our state historic preservation division, actually show me areas in Kabuki where I put in our years. To make me aware of that. So I find it odd that in their own office, the other corner parks didn't reach out to Shifty to find that out. Um, secondly, I want to add, Deal and I said, well, they're actually going to be on the trail, but they're not going to step off the trail. The trail or not, you're in sacred space. Once you cross into that, you're going to, that whole area is being exposed. And this year is 50 years of community working. Community working hard to save communities, to keep all those involved from the state, city, and community in conversation. And something so important like this to have the community shut up is shocking to me. So, the other has learned not to do this again and also how to engage with the community. Uh, Elizabeth, and then uh, Javier, I'm going to get it to you in just a moment. So, uh, Earlier, I had mentioned about um, trail work being done this Saturday at Cutty B. Uh, in light of this situation and the sadness of it, I've asked Monolu.net to come out and start participating in any of the iron work that we do um, at Cutty Malcolm and start sharing that story and the history of the area, not just people's plight of the 50 years of protecting it, keeping it in its wild and natural state, but the very important understanding of the cultural preservation of the area and the importance of that. So thank you very much. I just like to take a moment to mention that. And as you had heard, education is important. So we're fortunate that Anna Marie is going to come out and start educating every opportunity that we have. So thank you. All right, we have someone online that would like to participate. Deolani. Could you please identify yourself? Hello. Yes, I wanted to share um, that I did look at their website um, and there, there is no education on the site or the significance of the site culturally to our people. And that um, when you look at their um, site, and I put the um, site address in the chat, um, they do not have any kind of cultural activities or cultural connection to the Aina or places, nor do they do any type of education about the places that they hike regularly. It doesn't look like that. Um, so that's a real concern as a Kanaka Maoli that this is going forward. Um, also, they don't even say if they're going to have restrooms along the path. If there are no restrooms, that means they will be making, um, they would be using the, they would be um, relieving themselves, um, you know, in the grass or in the bushes. And again, that is disrespectful to a place that is sacred to Hawaiians. Mahalo. Thank you, Yanni. And we have someone else online. Alfred, you wanted to address the board? Go ahead. Hello, my Kako, or for Kakihana Madaris, Koi Noa, Noa, and Mayao. Um, I just want to echo the words of Heolani and I believe Malia Marquez. There is no cultural anything in that whole website. Um, my concerns is as a Kanako who protects the Ibi Kupuna, that it'll, it'll, it'll invite more future things to happen. You know, I've seen the whole layout of, of a plan of the Ka'iwi Coastline Park where they want to add a 60 parking lot. You know, they want to add an additional road and all this, this, this and that. And um, I'm not too sure why DLNR is not actually preserving the area. That's a very significant area to many of us, Kanaka, where we do pule and there we pray. You know, um, it's, 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 it's astounding that this is the first meeting that I've heard of. You know, and it's, it wasn't brought up to many of us within the community, you know, um, 
we're all about preservation. We're against desecration. And having multiple people walk through an area like that where it needs to be preserved, where native plants thrive, where animals actually come back, you know, like certain birds like Eva. You know, it's 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 very disheartening that a plan that's proposed is going to go through regardless of the community's concern, especially as Kanakamoli, who continues to fight to preserve and protect our land. You know, um, that area is not just for tourism. It's not just an attraction for people to look at, to watch the sunrise, to 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 just walk around as, as freely as it should be. You know, uh, many years ago, many people was over there desecrating that Aina by partying and four wheeling, and it was it was stopped. I know you guys know that. If you guys been around, like how we have, you know what was going on there many years ago. And just to have another event there and, you know, possibly future events and also a plan for a park is just heaven. You know, I think you guys need to reach out to the community, especially Kanaka Maoli, to see what you guys can do and how we can work hand in hand in the process at least, you know, to 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 acknowledge the concerns of us. As like as as Helani says and Malia Marquez says, there's Evie of our Kapuna buried there. Now what so what happens if something is discovered, right? If somebody just walking through and they see something, right? They're just gonna take it. Like how they always done. You know, so I mean, please go back to the drawing board and like I said, talk to the people of the community first. Get us get us Kanakamoli involved in the in the preservation process of this. As we know the Aina much more than many people who don't. Mahalo for you guys' time and I hope you understand our concerns. Aloha. Thank you very much, Alfred. Anybody else want to weigh in on this issue? Uh, yes, sir. Um, after hearing everybody here and knowing the EV's history and stuff, I feel like we should send Mr. Buck back to the governor and stop it right away so that if they want to try to do it again, then they have to go through all the proper routes. Obviously, it's not a big event, so it can be stopped and they can deal with it. But I'm just Putting it back on you as the state rep here. Thank you. Emily, did you raise your hand again or not take it down? Yes, I did. I rose my hand again. Sorry, I forgot to mention one more thing. Go ahead. Uh, so when I looked on their website, uh, they do have a cancellation and postponement policy. Um, so when they when you register for the race, you, you um, allow them, you waive all your rights to getting a refund and for um, the race to be postponed or canceled. So that is already warned when you go and register. Um, participants are warned already that the race may be canceled or or rescheduled. So we can't stop this race. It's not a done deal. Um, it's it, it it would cause a lot of harm to Kanaka and to our Aina and to our Eevee and to our native plants and um, life forms there. So I, I'm just saying that, you know, if this board could write a letter or um, if we could um, at least get them to postpone it so we can have more of a robust discussion in in order for an education in order for them. I mean, in, in, you know, if they're going to move forward with this, how do we get it so that our concerns as a community are addressed? Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Um, for members of our online and uh, visiting audience. This issue is part of our public generated issues, which was not agendized. And as such, this board cannot take action on this item. However, people in the audience may certainly voice their concerns directly to DMNR, and um, we will certainly keep an eye out in the future for um, any such events. We can certainly offer a different route perhaps for some of these events. I mean, we don't want to curb the community's uh, activities, but um, the site that they have identified for this particular event may not have, may not be the most appropriate. Elizabeth, do you have something to say? 
Thank you, Chair. Um, later on on the agenda, there's an update on Pettie State Student Shoreline. I just want to, for everybody who's listening right now, the board took a position asking the DLNR not to change the name of the area to Pettie State Park because it conjures up that sort of an activity, but to keep it as Pettie State. Oh, excuse me, Kaibi State Scenic Shoreline, which is truly what it is. And so um, I have yet to find out the timing of when it goes before the land board. Um, as long as I could be, I'm trying to track that. Um, and I'm just sharing that with you. It's just extraordinarily important that the name does not change to Kaibi State Park. Um, vastly different than Kaibi State Scenic Shoreline. So thank you, Chair, for allowing me to pitch that. And plug it. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody for weighing in on this issue. And we're going to be moving on with our agenda to our presentations. And first presentation is Aina Papawaki Update by the Kamehameha Schools Malalua Management Team. And um, Marissa, you may speak from there, but you may also speak closer. Are you comfortable there? You share. I am more comfortable here only because if I sit there, I have my back. Okay. And could you speak up loudly? I know it's your microphone, but uh, people online were saying that they weren't always able to hear because the online microphone is at our table in front of us. Okay. I'll do my best. Let me screen up the sharing. Thank you so much, Chair and Board Members and Community for having us back. Um, I think there are a couple of you that we didn't meet um, in July, and um, some of you we know through our process, so it's good to see all of you here this evening. Um, as Chair mentioned, we're here to bring you an update as to where we are in the planning process. Before I start, I'm just going to let you know, in case you might be disappointed, this is not the plan. This is just an update as to where we are in our planning process. So, this evening, I just want to welcome you folks, um, share our why and our Kuyama, our history in Mauritania, what our process is that we're currently going through, and the next steps that you can expect. Going to try and keep to the 10 minutes. Um, so I'll we'll keep going a little fast, but it's not because I just want to rush this. Um, we always like to start with our founder, Kelly Ibrahim's poem, Fisher, if you're not familiar with her. Our mission um, and our generosity, our local life buddy to really establish um, an institution that focuses on creating educational opportunities in perpetuity for our people in the public industry. Currently, we're working off our vision 2040, which was established in 2015. So, if you can think about that one period of 25 years, what we see as a generation, we are pushing ourselves more than ever to make sure that generation. Um, is, a, is thriving at the end of 2040. Our members are achieving more success than they have ever achieved. Um, they have good life and career choices in front of them to make the choice to fulfill their plan to their own land and community, and all while being grounded in the Christian and Hawaiian values of our family. So they also pay attention there. Um, most of you are familiar with the project team. A bunch of us are here this evening. I won't go through and read all of our titles, um, but there is also a larger project team behind uh, the faces that you see here on the screen. Our plan, if you're not familiar with it, really is to um, on the land side, or in this side of our organization, is to plan for our lands in alignment with what our mission is. Our, our values and our current vision for coming in schools. So really we take the opportunity to look for um, future land uses and opportunities that align with those values. Most importantly, thinking in terms of perpetuity, not just for us, 
and they hear that they're one of the current beneficiaries, but other generations after them. So not an easy task. And then balancing that with the needs of the city that we all have. Um, currently, our strategic map, Upanona, is focused on three goals. Um, first and foremost, focusing on low class schools available to educate our Kalamuna. Resilient communities, so that's a big part of this plan, um, engaging our communities to really encourage resiliency. Um, we've seen more change than ever, I think, in the last five to ten years, and so this is really important for us. And to be globally competitive in terms of how efficient we are as an organization and how we're performing. Um, this should not be a new slide, but I always love this slide because it's so challenging to think how much our landscape has changed in such a short period of time. Many of you are more familiar with these images than I am, but we put this here as a reminder to think about where we came and where we're going. Um, this is a snapshot of our what was our current environment, the land statewide, and the various LEE that Poli received her lands from. We can look here into the corner of Oahu here as well as the left here. This doesn't represent our most latest acquisition, which includes Kahuku Ranch in some Hawaii, Hamakua Loa lands in the Haiku area on Maui, and Kaupo in a good portion of it. So we're up to about 371,000 acres statewide. So for Maui, particularly, um, we look to Victoria Kamalani. Pass these lands on to Hawaii. And if you take a close look here, the shaded light green was also part of Hawaii's environment. The dark green is what we have there. And so when we look at Mauna Loa, we really think about Kamehameha and Hawaii having a really deep legacy here in the area. Really, everything that we see around us is once part of. I think when we came in July, we had some of this information in our knowledge of Kalakupuna, but we added a bit more to it. So I do want to spend a little time, I'll read this up here, I won't read through them all, but for us as, um, you know, those kind of lima of Kamehameha, it it's really takes us back a step to think about this being a place where Kane and Yaka Trevor Studio and Emma Hose at Emory. Definitely know this history better than I do the secret from Mojave and all these places that we know today and thinking of them in Kalapa and how this was part of our cultural and natural world landscape. Mauna Lua and our Kalapa of Mauna Lua, our 523 acre fish pond that's here in Mauna Lua, and thinking about Kamehameha himself participating in the restoration of that fish pond is pretty amazing. I'll, I'll jump up to that first bullet point there, Mauna Lua. Pretty, uh, one of the large things, seems small, but it also seems very large to us. Through this planning process, we're really reestablishing the use of the name Mauna Lua, even for us as an organization. And so I think even in the first time we came around, we had Hobo Head and Hobo Crater listed there, some of this latest version, uh, we were sure to add Kuomo Kane and Hobo Head there. Um, really just, I think it's Andrea and others just really trying to remember if these are the places of our ancestors and that's all in what they call them. Uh, also the rich farming street here in the area all of it as well. We want to provide some information on activities in Mauna Loa, kind of in the more modern era um, in the time of Maui's estate. So we see her passing in 1884, which was actually the anniversary of her passing was just last week. Um, our elder did pass from breast cancer, so we always remember her in the month of October, especially. And you can see child readership on her behalf, beginning to be cell lines and put them into a form of productive use with fish farms, branches, and other activities here. In the 20s, our school for boys began to come to the Papa Ione uh, and engage in farming, just some unique um, activities here. As I mentioned, most of Mauna Lua was Pauli's land, so you can see Pauli's land began to change hands over time. We see a lot of farming families in the area, and then we see the beginning of development in the 60s and 70s. And then our lands really kind of held along uh, 
um, do long term leases, but on leases that carry up to date, which would be plus years later, we're looking at land as we get ready for some of them um, to expire. So we began this process looking at our internal research, along you know, with I just shared with you, um, conducting. And I want to really express this as voluntary outreach for us as a landowner, this process we're currently going through with our stakeholders that we've identified as key stakeholders to our organization. Um, so we're in this process right now, I'm coming back to share with you today what we've heard so far. Then we will draft the plan, and then we will come into broad community outreach to all stakeholders interested in all of the world. So uh, PBR is our consultant on this, and I'm just going to go over these very quickly. These are technical maps that we use as a basis for our understanding. Again, we can begin to build this plan. For our stakeholders that came to our workshops, uh, we went over these in detail with them. We provided copies at the table for them to get familiar with, get comfortable with. And so I'm uh, just wanted the board and the broader community to know that we are taking these things into consideration. The location of education facilities, where are they? Um, archaeological and cultural resources at a very broad high level and not um, specific details of those sites remain preserved. Where are our recreational facilities in Mona Kula and access to those, um, including bus routes and bike lanes to ensure our interest to many in this road. Taking a look at the flood insurance rate maps, where are our streams and wetlands, tsunami evacuation zones, sea level rise is something we definitely take into consideration with all planning work going forward. Uh, and on top of hearts and minds of many, is what's the fire risk in our community? Agricultural lands of importance. Um, you'll see our, our two main agricultural areas. Highlighted there mainly because they're the only ones that also, I'm sure other pieces of these lands would have also shown up as prime image. Where's our solar? What's the rainfall like? And so we did get questions. We're not pursuing solar or wind in this project, so I just want to get that out of the way. Uh, state land use districts, and I should say large scale. We may do solar in terms of like viability of small operations and farms. Um, state land use districts taken into consideration. Definitely, there is some of the most sustainable communities plan. CA County zoning, and then like, most recently, some additional considerations from Representative Ford and the survey that he's undertaken. Um, East Honolulu the Watershed Management Plan that came here and also presented our teamwork on providing comments to them. So, getting to the good part stakeholder engagement um, since July. And a couple of small meetings before that, we've had a series of about 10 meetings with about 100 participants um, of stakeholders that we've engaged directly. I have over here on the listing of those groups, and we've been willing to talk to folks um, as the process goes on. Again, this is our voluntary landowner guided process, and we'll have a larger uh, community process after that. So, what we've heard so far, this is what we really came back to share with you today. This Wordle diagram shows you in, in order of size. I'm sure you've had lots of presentations over the years and are kind of familiar with this, but the larger the word, the more we heard it, right? So um, incorporating culture and history, restoration of natural resources, agriculture, and facilities that support that, and food hubs, and housing for native ways, managing water resources, affordable housing has come up a lot, not forgetting our youth in the area. One of our Kupuna adult farm to school. So um, it's been a really exciting process for us to kind of have this sit down with our primary stakeholders and just hear from them. And so this is a really busy slide, but we're starting to synthesize what our stakeholders have told us is of interest to them and in what locations based on the land that we have. And I really want to stress. This is feedback at this point that will take into consideration when drafting a plan, but this is not the plan itself. I know it's so easy to like, oh, what are they doing with the shopping center and all those things, but this is really to help us synthesize the information we've heard so far. So in that portal diagram that we had up earlier, where did they tell us that they want to see those things, right? And so um, we're already at 11 minutes, so I'll be up here to answer questions, but let me just say, the end of this again in our process. We're still doing community outreach. We have not drafted our plan. We're going to go inwards during the next couple months when everyone gets busy with the holidays. 
November, December, early January, and we'll be working on this draft plan um, to bring out to community, and it looks like in March at the earliest. And so um, you may not hear from us for a while, but we're always available, accessible, our email address up there, we're always meet with folks. Um, again, this is just a snapshot of where our IMA is in all the blood and what we currently have in those events. And this, along with all the other base maps, are informing what we can or we might be able to do or what opportunities exist here in Honolulu. And so, with, oh, I also want to invite on, um, we did so many versions of this. We are preparing with the E Coast Run. Uh, next month, we will probably see Calvin and Todd there. Um, we're happy to be a sponsor of that event. So, although we won't be doing community meetings during that time, we'll try to still be out here. I'll pause there. Thank you for that. Thank you, Marissa. Uh, we appreciate you and your team being here tonight. Are there questions for Marissa at this time? Uh, Elizabeth first, and then think about your questions. I just want to say mahalo because you guys are also a part of the PDB explorations since we started. So mahalo. They sit at the table, they plan it, they come out, and they hook up. So. Um, I do have one question. I'm glad that you mentioned that you anticipate having a draft plan sometime in March. I'm sure that that could be adjusted, if, but uh, I'd like to know, um, in your meetings with the stakeholders, I'm sure the, the issue about lease, leases ending has come up. And uh, so people who are on these leasehold properties, I guess, are very concerned about you know, what is going to happen within the next couple of years. Are you able to give them any kind of um, assurances or? Sure. I, last time I was there, I spoke to Judy, and actually we haven't heard too many concerns since then. I think because we're trying to be as transparent and communicative as possible. And so, yes, while well, it would take us to March to have a draft plan, and we know it'll only be another year or so that some of those farm leases. I think what I did commit publicly to Judy and others was, you know, come 2025, as we're still working on implementation, I personally committed to working with farmers on the transition plan, whatever that may be for them, even though the lease expires in 2025. Um, I think as a organization that focuses on our community and our beneficiaries, I'm personally committing to, to working individually with our tenants, which we've always said really it's a private contract between us and our tenants. So, um, yeah, it's throughout the process, it really hasn't um, come up in these last couple of months that we've been doing this sort of engagement, but I always happy to talk to folks if they have questions. Questions? That's it. This is going to sound a little odd, but I I think it might be a good idea to mention it right now. And, um, I'm sorry, Todd, I didn't speak with you first, but I want to make sure that you have every fair shot at continuing the good community outreach that you're doing and that people's perceptions don't take an odd turn. As it relates to Camilla New Valley, um, there's somebody who lives there that's taking it upon themselves to stop the people from walking. And they're a bit of a bully. Um, I actually observed it just to see for myself. I received um, inquiries about it. And I just kind of thought it was appropriate to mention it because uh, the individual may uh, misrepresent and people may think that it's a man at school. And I was so concerned about that. And so, uh, sorry, Todd, I didn't speak with you directly. But why not just mention it over there transparently? I'll mention something and then I'll turn it over to Todd. Um, so just to clarify, Camino Mini Valley Road is a private road, it's privately owned by community schools. I do understand um, the need for community recreation and activity, which is better guided on public spaces. So we're happy to be here to facilitate conversation with state and government, state and I'm sorry, state and city as appropriate. Um, so I think our farmers are also some of them just trying to protect 
your areas. But we won't go into too much detail on it. We're happy to talk with you offline at another time. So we were brought, we were made aware that actually we actually had, we had conversations with a board member, um, actually, and he, he brought it to my attention tonight. Uh, so Judy brought it to my attention as well. So we've been made aware that we have not had an opportunity to investigate it. We will look into it. Uh, there's a hand online. Yeah, honey, you have something that you'd like to ask? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hi, yes. Uh, so I just want to just comments and, and, and um, <clears throat> input on the plan. Thank you for presenting it. Um, I wanted to just a couple things. Um, you know, you talk, it seems like culture is a big um, part. A, a lot of feedback came back about culture. So, um, you know, one of the issues that many of us Kanaka here on the east side of Oahu have is with the name Hawaii Kai. Even the way that it is put together is um, grammatically wrong. Um, and um, the history of the name, um, it should go back to Mauna Lua. The other thing I was, I was kind of, um, I was a little shocked when I saw uh, the fire, the fire map, you know, um, the, the areas that are um, um, that are in danger of or you know could could easily you know be literally burned down like how Lahaina was so you know um, and I would like to see fire prevention um, planting trees is a huge way of um, of doing that you know what we see in Lahaina I think um, looking at at that map. It, it's a little shocking, you know, of, of the areas that are, are that are vulnerable to fires. And uh, the the last thing I had was the history that you shared uh, about Kamehameha schools in this area. The history hasn't always been good, you know, with Kalama Valley and, and all of that, you know. And um, and I know that there were farmers back in the day. And all of those farmers were evicted by Kamehameha schools. That history needs to be part of this narrative. In order to move forward, you need to go, you need to stand on a firm foundation of truthfulness and, and, and share the history of, of what really happened here and of the history of this possession. The, the, the history of, of why, how was this area developed, you know, and why, you know, so. I think, you know, more of that needs to be shared, but thank you. I appreciate your presentation. Aloha. Well, hold on. You have any, can you just respond to those? So, for your support of the name, Aloha. Um, I think even our stakeholders are getting more mild to it. And so, um, we appreciate the support for that. Secondly, um, you mentioned the fire risk. So that map did come from the Hawaii wildfire management organization. I believe we're working to try and get an updated map from them. I believe it was from 2020. Um, but yes, absolutely concern for all of our communities. And so that's what it's part of our planning process. Um, and we are working on that statewide. And thirdly, um, I apologize, we did have the Kalama Valley protest that we listed in our timeline. And in the interest of time and being up here, I just try to grasp really quickly what we're through. I think we brought it up the last time. So absolutely not trying to shy away from our history. Um, I'm part of the planning statewide for our lands. And so we go through this in other areas as well. It's called Mama, this burden that we carry for the previous restart the land managers before us and the decisions they made in their time under different circumstances. So absolutely it is part of my narrative and color my work. Um, not reading through that bullet point this evening. So thank you. You have to know where we came from to know where we're going. Okay, Marissa, we have a couple of people online. Okay, Malia, you can make it. We have a couple of people online also. Go ahead. Piggybacking off Valerie. No, no, they cannot hear you online. Piggybacking off my teacher, Valerie. I'm drafting a resolution for the board to bring Mauna Lua to life because my life is full circle. 
my ancestors were from the valley. And then I was adopted out of the Rubio Community Trust for my apartment in time that should be in Thomas Nam. So I come full circle of Balanua and Hawaii Kai. So we have this fancy Hawaii Kai sign, and everybody started to learn Balanua, Balanua. We need a sign. I need your Anna. I need, I need money. And we need a sign, or, or we better put Balanua right below Hawaii Kai. We can share the sign. But Coming to Hawaii Kai every day and seeing that sign, mm -hmm. Hawaii Kai. Kai isn't for our ocean, it's for Kai sir. And it's slap in the face for my ancestors that got put out of Kalama Valley to house the people now. I have nothing against Hawaii Kai because I am Hawaii Kai as well, but we need a sign. So I am drafting a resolution. I will present it and I'll, I'll email the chair. And I want to get this done by 28, 24, 25. I need to get this done. I need to get it done for our ancestors so we know where we come from so where we can go ahead. Did you want to say something or shall I want to the others? Mohamed, well, please had a comment where it's something opposite. I don't think it's something that is in opposition to, to what we would work on. So yeah, we can stay in touch. I know you can not be on All right, uh, Representative Ward. You have a comment or a question? Thank you, Madam. I have a follow up to your question regarding the farmers. Um, I'm wondering when that may give some indication of the lease to be either discontinued or to be continued uh, because it's so soon that it's going to happen. And as many of you know, in my last month's uh, report, I showed the survey of, of the district that said, you know, 90 plus percent say keep the farmers in the valley. And I was wondering if Commandment Schools, who I did send that to, has seen that and if they can be a little bit more lenient in terms of the time when they let the farmers know what they can do or what they can't do, because it's getting so close to the end game of their 50 year leases. So just to follow up your question, Chair. Uh -huh. Um, and one thing we've heard is very clearly through this process is that agriculture needs to be a part of Maunalua, and we don't disagree with that. In what form it takes, how the leases look, where they are, um, that's yet to be determined and guided by this plan. It also needs to be approved by our executive leadership. Um, so it's something we we provide up to our trustees and our CEO to review as well. Um, again, those would be private lease contracts between Kamanda and those farmers. Um, there was one other thing that was going to say about it that's escaping me, but I also wanted to provide you while I'm thinking about that. The Kamila Nui sewer update, because it's later on your agenda, and I figure I'll just take care of it now. Um, we are still working on design. Bowers and Kubota is our engineer, and they've gone out, I think, twice now on the field for specific. Um, Field work, soil testing, and other things. So that process will be ongoing at least probably for 18 months. So we're likely not to have um, a very different update for you while the engineers are designing the sewer replacement. And I still haven't thought of Representative Ward's comment, but yes, we absolutely agree. Agriculture is part of our portfolio statewide, and we'd like to see it in, in all just years where it is. And I would add, these are private lease negotiations, but remember, the community is so involved. It's it's not just private lease negotiating. You're really negotiating with the whole community. If you feel the pulse of how people in Hawaii feel about their farmers, it's an endearment. So please take it more than just a private negotiation. It's a community negotiation to have farmers in the back of the Valley. But thank you for uh, taking my comment. Aloha. Uh -huh. All right, um, then Fenton online, go ahead. Hi, thank you um, to the neighborhood board and also for Kamehameha schools for being present. And I know that you said that you would address this issue offline, but I need to um, reiterate the concern of many, many citizens about this individual in Camilla Nui Valley. I was walking my dog the other night and I hadn't even made it back to the valley. I was on um, Keoholu right at the gate. I was speaking to one woman who um, told me this was happening and I stood there for 15 minutes and there were seven elderly people who said, have you come back in the valley? Are you just walking to the water? And apparently this gentleman is approaching these elderly folks 
six inches away in their face, telling them they're on private property. They cannot be back there unless it's land. So I think that you might put this at the top of your thousands of issues. I'm sure you're very, very busy, but this I'm concerned that this could lead into some type of um, something very dangerous for all the folks that walk back there. And I want to kind of reiterate what Representative Ward said, which is kind of interesting. I used to volunteer back in that valley. And during the pandemic, I am telling you more and more families, elderly individuals found your road, which we thank you so much for making it a community asset, but they discovered this wonderful outdoor asset. So um, number one, please address this issue about this tenant of yours harassing everyone walking back there. And also please um, know that we appreciate your community asset and do consider that as something the whole community is concerned about as you move forward. Thank you. Thank you. And interested um, quickly again, it is a private road, and I think as you mentioned, more people have discovered it in, in recent times. Certainly, if anyone feels threatened in any space, we always encourage them uh, to contact the police if they need immediate intervention. Hopefully, they will get that way. But we do have We have one black land operations manager in this area, we have one asset manager, Todd. So we aren't able to always hop in the car and come right out. So please use your proper um, change of authority if you need intervention. But it is a private road. I think that's something we'll discuss further during our process. Certainly some of our tenants have welcomed people on who volunteer and work at their farms. And I think if you're there with permission from our tenants, that's something we can talk here. But um, yeah, let's be initial. If I could just add one follow up to that, and it might be, and I understand you're busy, but again, I think something very dangerous is going to happen back there. Um, and my understanding too, from these individuals that many times the police will say that that's private property and it's, it's community schools property when they call them and ask them to intervene. So perhaps you can work with the HPD and let them know about the issue and that they certainly should respond, even though it's, even though it's, um, Apparently, Kamehameha Schools Road. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Yeah, thank um, you so much. We have a question from a member of the audience. Would you come on up and use the microphone, please, so that the people online can hear your question? My question is in uh, reaction to all the discussion about your community outreach. Uh, what the uh, stance of the and schools Bishop Estate is with regard to the East Island Honolulu Sustainable Community Plan. It uh, sets out policies that can call for certain uh, land uses to persist in the future, including the farmlands, which are protected. That land, and I'm wondering, do you view what you're doing is something that's attempting to work within the framework of the plan, or are you starting from scratch and came up with things that would require changes to the plan that you're trying to advocate for changes to the plan? Thank you so much for the question. I know I just went through those maps earlier, but I think it's very quickly. But there is a map of the East Honolulu Sustainable Communities Plan. We absolutely are taking it into account as we do our planning, understanding of what has been approved uh, for various parcels. We understand if we're going to propose something different, there is a governmental process, public process for comment on that. So absolutely, it's there. We are taking it into account. Um, and at this point, your the question was, um, kind of have a blank slate in terms of hearing from folks, and then we're going to put that together with some our goals and values and see where there's support and collaboration. I think ideally we would move forward with things that have support. Okay, a question from Elizabeth and then Anne Marie. Not a question, I just wanted to comment on something. There was some chat about fire lives, and I just want to say mahalo to Femia schools because Camilla Nui Valley and Mariners Cove is right now the only nationally recognized firewise community on the island of Oahu. And that was since um, 2018 and has been kept up since then. So good folks like fellow board member Carol Jackson 
work very, very hard on that under the direction of Hawaii Wildfire Management Organization. And um, since the Haina incident, um, devastation, uh, more and more uh, neighborhoods on the island of Oahu have become interested. Pretty soon, we're going to have Wailaiki, another fire community, which is quite nice. Um, so I just wanted to mention that, that under the direction of um, Y Wildfire Management, Kamehameha Schools has worked with the community from Mariners Cove and Illinois. And that includes the upland of where the post cemetery is. So that private landowner is also a part of that partnership. So I just wanted to, to mention that. And thank you. I acknowledge you guys. And thank you for that. And we're also accelerating some of our regular uh, vegetation management schedule. I think you have seen it here um, for the water here across the post office, and we're currently assessing other areas. Okay, Anne Marie. Thank you so much. Um, I have a question. I worked on the issues for decades, and and some of that involved me in schools. And I worked with four or five different people. They're always changing, and this is a really great team you have now. But it's the community. How do we have an assurance that the plan we're going to get is going to be followed through? Because I know on other issues, and we have to be educated. School, so it's more like how do we know 10 years from now the team is going to change, but the plan will still be the same? Thank you for the question. I think one of the things that helps provide some of that guarantee is the fact that we're doing a public outreach process because you folks will remind us if somebody changes staff. And I know it feels like we change often, but many of us have been here 10 plus years and Joey retired, so. Um, time goes by quicker than it actually seems. Um, we really don't change our experience too much. You may have seen the tide go back and forth between Mahalua and other areas, but quarantine, everyone behind us has also been here um, for a long time. But going through this process, engaging community, keeping you engaged even after the plan is done, and we'll get to implementation, and then it continues on. Like I envision us always being engaged at some of the here at the neighborhood board, we do this in other associations in Honolulu, in Keokaha, in Hilo. So um, we just need to stay engaged. That's our commitment. Um, community engagement is part of that. All right. Thank you, Marissa and team. Last question, Herb. I've been hiding. <laughs> Could you speak up? Um, I didn't go to any public meetings. I didn't speak at the last meeting that you were here. But I did approach you guys after the meeting, so I want to put it on record. Um, the Great Lawn is what we call it, is very, very sensitive out here. So as you go through your planning, um, people really love driving into Mauna Lua and see the mountain to the ocean. And uh, uh, the proposed strip mall years ago, we were so happy it's gone. So just wanted to bring that up. Uh, to Camilo Nui Valley, should be all farms. It should actually go into food farms and um, and and utilize it in our community. Um, and then uh, last but not least, um, to the Kalama Valley Shopping Center thing that happened, we don't really want any more high rises out here. You did hear that very clearly. Okay, so that, I just wanted to put Thank that on you. record. Thank you. I just want to address your comment a little bit. The current process we're going through for outreach and engagement is our targeted stakeholders. We do plan to have a larger community outreach um, in the spring. So this is not the last chance. We just actually follow you folks and appreciate your patience while we go through our process as a landowner with those that we feel most directly engaged with us, um, like with our values and our mission, and who we know. You know, with any of these tenants or tenants, um, we feel it's the right thing to do to meet with them first. So, more to come. Thank you very much, Marissa, and we look forward to that more to come in the near future. Thank you, Command and School team. We appreciate you all being here. All right, we're going to be moving on to our second presentation this evening. This is a uh, Presentation on a special management area permit for our residents at 3 Koipu Drive. And we have a presenter from JASA Architects, Jim Schmidt. Hello, Jim. Hi. Thank you for joining us. And uh, 
we'd like you to use the microphone, please. Uh, Marissa, if, if I could ask you for a copy of your presentation, if you would send that to me by mail, I'll share it. Thank you. Right. 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 So we connected there. It's everything connected there. Yeah, that was connected. Okay. So good. Well, gonna put the screens. Can see much of it. Describe it. Okay, those who are watching it online or in the audience, um, we apologize for the visual quality. But board members do have this in hard copy in front of you, so um, we'll, we, we'll we have a couple of it. If somebody in the audience wants it. All right, we have a couple of extra copies if anybody is interested. The board members, you may have to follow along with the hard copy. Go ahead, Jim. So the camp schools people leave. Oh, they're here. Well, but as a, uh, this is my second neighborhood board meeting, and all things that are both by kind. The other one I was here for a project they did called Bali Loss of of the San Rolla or Poe Kai Bai. There's 10 modern houses up there in Oman. And then I bought that land from Camp Schools. So I wanted to thank you all for that for your question. And uh, this time the SMB is defined by a special management area that basically refers to now any water on it. And uh, it's only recently that it's been a requirement for all water on properties to go through an SMB. Consequently, you know, I've done over 600 houses here in Hawaii and uh, probably 100 of them on the beach. This is the first time I've ever had to do an SMA. Consequently, we have lots of Fujioka. And uh, this crew, who are extremely capable engineers, they actually uh, I worked with Masa 40 years ago when Masa was in the room. <laughs> and uh, uh, anyway, it's, it's all ironic. And, uh, I have to say, I, I haven't expected that the time that I was waiting for to talk would be as informative and as uh, educational as it was with uh, the audience's participation and camp school's participation. And uh, it's, it's very, you know, very enlightening. I, I'm glad that that worked out for everyone. And anyway, so um, the SMA is uh, one part of the process. There are, there are uh, there are a lot of parts of it. Uh, Everything possible you know, environmentally gets studied, the land gets studied, the water gets studied, everything gets studied, and we have professionals who prepare the reports. And, um, their reports aren't here, but we've got the guys from Austin Fujioka here to answer any questions that you have of a technical nature. Um, this land at the end of Poipu Drive, um, you see what, what used to having the speed. Back to the set of front of Sylvie, tuck some things. You can see it? But there's a, uh, a circle there, and that's the site. The site from Poipu to cul de sac at the end of Poipu, very similar to this cul de sac on the street above, goes straight down to the open. There's a uh, 
there's a lid at the bottom where people who aren't that uh, smart about it jump off into the water and something gets drowned there every couple of years or so. But uh, um, it's we're we're well above that. Both the, uh, the shoreline setback, we have a certified shoreline setback now. Um, the setback is 40 feet from the agreed upon line with the state's surveyors that are doing. And this house, this lot, had another house on it up until about 10 years ago when uh, they demolished that house in hopes of building a bigger, nicer house. But they unfortunately didn't pay attention to what the actual rules are about homeowners association as well as the city and county uh, rules for setbacks. So consequently, that house was never built, and my client bought the lot and hired me to do his house. And that's the house that was torn down recently, recently meaning like 10 years. As you know, uh, recently becomes a different kind of term. But, uh, and this is the ledge where there are usually people walking around down there. There's two ways to come down. You can come down through the Spit Caves edge, or you can come down through China Walls edge. They both have public railways. And right now, people think that our lot is a public way because there's no house on it. Uh, we frequently tell people you, you really shouldn't be trying to climb around on these cliffs. But anyway, um, th this is the last time that, that picture was taken in 2006, and the house was demolished. Shortly later that year. Let's go to the next one. Uh, that's a permit. <laughs> and this is a house that's very really similar to the one that we're doing. That's at the end of, uh, it's, it's actually two lots up from, from where we are. And uh, again, it's supported above the ground because there's a lot of water flow that goes down there. We, we really uh, we, we don't want to interfere with the water, and we actually can't by code so that uh, we're, we're basically uh, a bridge over that drainage area and uh, I think that'll be uh, safe for everyone and primarily the main thing is uh, when you're dealing with architecture and water uh, you're not allowed to divert the water or concentrate it in, in any kind of way you'd have to as much as possible let it take its natural flow and so right now, this is 100% natural flow there. And uh, that means we won't get any surprises. Like wake up and find out that something's underwater because we're 50 feet above the water level. Uh, next one. Can't read it. Sorry. Uh, anything important there? It's just a chronological sequence of events. Of oh, chronological sequence of events from uh, historically. Yeah. It, Meeting the neighbors. Oh, yeah. So when we started the process, uh, the first thing we did is met the neighbors and uh, find out. I'm concerned always about whether I'm going to be blocking someone's view and uh, or if they're going to be in my view. I want to know either one of those things. And it turns out that uh, we're basically not blocking the, blocking the view as much as the previous house did because we're, we're much farther down the hill. The only thing that's at street level is the garage and the entry to the house. And then from there, the house goes down three degrees uh, to the lower level is, uh, the swimming pool. Again, the swimming pool is still 20 feet above the ground, but uh, you never know when you're actually in the house. And you wouldn't know it's a swimming pool from outside because it's not a glass wall pool or anything that would become a feature. It's, it's just a regular pool. Um, what else did we get there? Oh, then uh, we met with the uh, homeowners association and went over everything, detail with them for a number of months. And got their own people. And uh, oh, so now that puts us into the city and county and the permit process. The permit process right now is extremely disturbed. Um, it's it's dysfunctional in a, in a large portion. Um, and as I was saying, like, for instance, they changed the rules that everybody needs to get an SMA. And that's, in, in theory, that's a good thing. But, you know, when you're building on a lot that's already been built on before 
and you're living, you're living with the model permits, it may be it may be a little unnecessary. On the other hand, it makes everybody feel more comfortable. Uh, it also gives us the professional addition, the addition that we wouldn't have had ourselves. And uh, I'm sure it'll turn out just fine because we, we uh, across the board have no disturbance, none of the negative of possible outcomes of any other things that were in the report uh, turned out to be negative. So that was good. That's good. This is the uh, site plan aerial view. And this little square here is a garage. This is the upper roof of the house, and it slopes down at a one in ten high point here to the low point down there. Uh, and that's the shoreline setback and the existing shoreline. Um, this, this is the new the new one. Uh, this is the, the cul-de-sac up here where we come through the gate. This is a turning circle around the garage. The garage has a uh, car lift in it that takes cars down on one level underground. There's, there's underground parking for uh, six electric cars and have solar panels to power all the electric cars that this guy can buy. So uh, it, it, it really minimizes the, uh, the monster house look. And I know that the city of is terrified of monster houses. We, we hate them. We're, we live in Kaima Key. There's monster houses up there that are not particularly nice. I mean, so, uh, next page. That's the underground portion. And, uh, we had a couple of uh, staff bedrooms down there, which we've been told uh, they're no longer allowing. So now there are storage rooms. And I, I put a note on it that says, uh, we'd really like these to be bedrooms. And we're going to show them as bedrooms and we're going to use them as storage rooms until the DPP decides that it's okay for us to have bedrooms. So, because uh, I don't want to be doing anything that uh, is sort of hidden from them, find it easier to just say what we're really thinking. I don't deceive anybody. So, uh, we may or may not get the right to do that. But if we do get the right to do that, we're ready for it because we're planning that we're going to, to, to get that approval. Uh, next. Then there's about that level now. Let's go back on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so right, right here, there's a, an underground path to the main house, which uh, next page comes out. Sorry, comes out there. So that's if you if you're uh, living in the house and you got a car that you'd like to keep underground or enclosed, then you take it down to the lower level parking and you can just get up and go to your car. Uh, there's room for four or five cars on the, the turning circle area that, that are more of a um, sunshade over an area uh, like a park. And that's for daily kinds of visitors. But we've got plenty of parking. I know one of the things about Cutlass Axe, especially, um, you're not allowed to park there. You're not supposed to. And uh, parking is like the biggest issue. If you're building a big house, everybody gets worried about you're not going to have enough parking. So we have plenty of parking. And, uh, I think that will can be lower enough for everyone. And this is the, the bedroom wing over here. This is the, the, the living area. That's the bedroom area. And there's two stories of bedroom areas. And then that's the cool down there. Next one. That's the bottom, the bottom level. This is the, the natural rock cliff. The water comes down and goes under and comes out of that. So that's uh, someone who lives in the neighborhood emailed me the last few weeks. And I just saw it uh, about these. He might be my neighbor on the other side who doesn't have a mailbox that we haven't been able to communicate with. But, uh, he was saying that uh, when it's stormy, uh, under your rough flood kind of thing, uh, that gully that we're building over is uh, a real waterfall, which is great because uh, 
Wayne Floyd Prince, my favorite architect, and he did a house called Falling Water. He built uh, in Pennsylvania, he built a house over a natural waterfall. Well, this will never be that charming, but at least it's got the same kind of relationship. You'll hear the water in a storm, which is always nice. And uh, I don't think we can hear the ocean from up there. So um, you can see it anyway. Next. These are sections. You can see the. Uh, this is this is the ten foot slope. Is the upper height limit of the house. And everything goes down from there until you get down to the the rock down here at the bottom where the bottom of the puddings go. Next. That's the ocean view looking up. Again, this is the uh, this is where the water flow comes under the house down across the, uh, the ledge down there. This is the city and county, uh, all this stuff in color you can tell it's in color probably. But all, all of that is the, the side yard setbacks. Hey Jim, I don't think we have to go through every slide. <laughs> for questions and um, I'm going to start with that, that well, covers everything anyway. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with a couple questions of my own before I open it up to the other board members. Uh, on one of these plans, you show an, an existing 2023 shoreline setback right. and then another 40 foot shoreline That's setback. The current, that's the, the current one. So um, this, is, this is the actual shoreline. This one shouldn't say shoreline setback. This is the actual shoreline. This is the shoreline setback. All right. So the talk about that. The house that was there yeah. initially. Yeah. Did it uh, stop at the same shoreline setback? Yes, it did. It, it was right under this house. So the footprint is similar. Very similar. Uh, I think there's let me just see. Get that actual topo in here. No, we got the latest topo. Yeah. The, the, the latest topo doesn't show where the old house is. But we have a topo that does show exactly where it is and where the existing pool was. And they were actually down on the ground, which didn't seem very smart to me, but um, apparently they didn't get damaged by it because there's a picture of us. All right, my second question in your summary, you say that this is a custom designed multi generational home. Right. Multi generational home, is it still considered a single, single family? Oh, yes. yes. And what it means is that, for instance, if I'm a grandfather, I want to buy this house. I would be the, the older generation. And then my kids would be the current generation, and their kids would be the third generation. And actually, my first house that I did back in 1974 was a uh, multi generational house. It's for a Chinese family up on Wiley. And the son, with the oldest son, now owns that house because when his parents died, he got the house, and his younger brother got the business. I think, but uh, he got the house, and uh, I did a remodel for him twenty years after his parents got the house. So that was kind of interesting. Okay, uh, Elijah, could you put the slides on again? And question, Elizabeth. Yes. Thank you. Um, three questions. Could you articulate? So I was looking at this, how many bedrooms and bathrooms you're planning and can you clarify, you said something about the DPP, not wanting the downstairs. No, no, they, they don't want staff bedrooms. Okay. okay, so yeah, clarify on how many bedrooms you're planning for in the bathroom. And then the other is when you were talking about um, there's a tunnel from here to there and you talk about the Parking in that system. Is there, is it all at the grade of the land right now, or do you have to dig down and you'd have to bore across to get that tunnel? It's a lot of like tune shaping. It could be, but it might not be because we're, 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 our next step, um, I've held hired a uh, towel to go out there and find out how much dirt there is, how much rock there is. And what kind of an effort it's going to take to get down to where we want to be. Now, what we're looking for there is the, the biggest it can possibly ever get. But we, 
or not necessarily going to go that big. We have a not quite so big plan, and we have a half as big plan, and we have a small plan. Yes. From a structural engineer standpoint, will you be keeping close tabs with the neighbors and their homes and how all that might affect them? And then please clarify again on how many bedrooms and that thank you so much. It's kind of hard to not keep in touch with the neighbors because as soon as they're out there, they come out and say hi. And uh, we like to meet the neighbors. We like the neighbors. So all of that is good. What was the rest of your question? We're limited to eight bathrooms. That's, that's the limit. But to make up for that, what they've done is now they set up any two plumbing fixtures within reasonable proximity to each other constitutes a bathroom. So that, for instance, even though there are more than eight people who are living in the house, you can't have your own bathroom. You've got to share your bathroom with somebody because the numbers just don't work. If a toilet and shower is a bathroom, and a shower and a sink is a bathroom, and two toilets is a bathroom, then it's just, it makes it very difficult to design something for a wealthy person who has a large family. So it's, uh, I'm not exactly fond of how it's going, but I am meeting continually with uh, the mayor and the managing director and the deputy director of TPP and a lot of people at TPP. And uh, I, I always think I have a solution and I'm happy to share my solutions with them. And they're fairly receptive to it, but they don't really know how to take the next steps. So I'm trying to prod them along. Um, There's the original answer. Six bedrooms. Six bedrooms, not counting the potential future two bedrooms. Yeah, yeah six bedrooms. And he has, I think he has more kids than that. We're not all going to be living at home. Questions? Yes. Um, with the familiar? Got the quiet. Yeah, you need to move the mic. I need words. Sorry, my house is in one home, but this is the reason my people don't live here. I don't know if this is the sheep coming or who this is, and you're going to start coming into the, these are caves. This is Tabaiqua. Tabaiqua is what you call a mongoose actual spring of our water, how our ancestors used to get water. You are digging into our natural water source that they said dried up, but it's not because Tabaiqua is still there. That's my last name. It's going to happen. Hawaiians are used to this, but I have I can't just sit here while I feel like pumped or something because I'm I'm not used to seeing this kind of thing, and I know it happens because we're in Hawaii time. But this is the reason Hawaiians, Chinese, Filipinos, locals, multi generational people that have come here from the 18, 1900s aren't here anymore because of this. And I'm sorry to put this on you, but that's just, that's just reality, and it just doesn't sit. Over the next few months, I, I would love to show you everything that we're doing and maybe make you feel more comfortable about it, even though you hate the idea. Yeah. I'm happy to have that conversation. It's, it's, I've been doing this for over 50 years, and uh, my, my daughter was born here. My grandchildren were born here. I understand, I understand, but, but 
I don't want to argue. I just want to make sure that um, the community walks along these cliffs, um, either to go fishing or whatever cultural purpose they are concerned. I just want to make sure on this picture there's a line running through on all the clouds. So there's a setback head that's in fact in the play at high tide in the winter time. And then we go. So I want to make sure this area is open because right now we're just going into a dangerous place. But the community needs to be able to walk towards the top. And I just want to say I echo everything that Malia said. You understand the feel. I would have to differ with you on that. However, I'll never convince you that I feel. But not, not, not tonight. Not tonight. You don't know that I'm sure. If those, those people are, in fact, following the path that you're describing, and they will be continue to be able to be there. Everything that we're doing is stopping up here. Doing anything. We can't. Come on. At the street. At the, at the street we're digging in. Okay, we're going to be moving on. Are there other questions? Yes, sir. Does this IT family, are they living in Hawaii now or are they plan on moving here and living in one house? The guy's got money. I'm surprised they're all going to be living multi generational in one house on the end of Poitou. The guy will all be there at the same time. Um, you know, he's, he has a two year old grandson and uh, he has kids that are in their 30s and 40s. So whether they're all going to be there or not, I don't know. He, he prior, right now he lives in Baltimore. Um, he's originally from the Philippines. Uh, he had, and he was in IT. He was, I don't know if you meant that is uh, uh, what he does. Put that down in here. Oh, good. That's just, well, it wasn't a guess. I was going to say it was a good guess, but otherwise. Um, okay, so uh, he had companies at the same latitude as Hawaii. So that he, 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 I guess that, uh, that pleased him. But what he has is, is businesses around the, around the world rather than houses around the world. What I'm hearing is a personal, private, family vacation rental. No, it's not a vacation rental. It's not a rental at all. Um, this guy probably never had to rent anything out in his life. Um, this is where he and his family are going to live, and his friends will come over. I think rental out. Sorry? Family vacation it, it, Not necessarily. He doesn't work anymore, so he doesn't take vacations anymore. So it's like it's not a vacation home, but it, that's all semantics. And, and I'd be happy to, to get into that with you at some point over a cup of coffee or something. But uh, uh, for tonight, um, I understand your position. I don't feel it, but I do understand it. Okay, um, Jim, yes. just yes. a comment and then I'll let you go. I think that um, you have heard that. Some of the community members are concerned about boring into the landscape and what that might do to that particular land area and the neighborhood. And the other thing, uh, in one of your pictures, you have what looks like man-made concrete under the foundation. And so I would be a little concerned about whether that's going to be put down on the ledges, you know, be, below the house. So uh, we, we can't build on the ledges. It's okay. We can only build on the hillside above the ledge. And oh, I wouldn't choose to build down there anyway. Sea level rise may not be affecting us immediately. And even if it takes 30 years to raise a foot, you know, we're quite a ways above it. But I still wouldn't want to put any kind of structure. To an area where there might be a possible spill or risk. Right. And then um, Sam. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hi, my name is about the garage, which is which side of the house say you will be built. This is the garage that will be used. It's up to the street level. 
it's under the driveway when you drive. No, the, the water doesn't come up that high. The water comes out. Storm water, by the way, it's not spring water, it's storm water. I just have to say that the, the scope of the work to me is, is obscene. The amount of underground construction, dirt, and rock removal, excessive just for it's, it's desecration at its purest form. Um, this gentleman named Randy, I just looked it up on the the this is not the Hollywood Hills. You know, if he wants to take this project to the Hollywood Hills or if he's in Baltimore or take it down to Florida, I'm sure he'd be more than welcome. It, it, it sounds like a lot of fun from an architect developer point of view um, to play around with big machinery and plan. This is not the place for this kind of house, it is uh, completely unnecessary, and disrespectful to this land. So there's a lot of large families here in Hawaii. I don't need this kind of property. He doesn't need it either. So I just highly encourage him as the owner while it's still vacant to sell the land to somebody that wants to build something more modest and respectful of the place. Um, it's not this. Uh, it's absurd. Hey, uh, Member Collinsworth online. Yes, I just wanted to be on record to say that I find it ironic that we're having a discussion before this about changing the name back to what it should be, Moanalua Bay and Moanalua and not Hawaii Kai. And then you get- uh, You're muted, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, Jim, we can't hear you. Perhaps uh, we'll try again later. All right, any other questions for the architects? All right, lots for you to digest. Jim, Thanks. Going back. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we're going to be moving on to our officials' reports, starting with uh, Mayor Rick Langiardi. Slide. Okay, Mayor Langiardi. Hi, this is Amy. Can you hear me? Hello? Amy, are you here online? Or Kim? Yes, I'm on and I am trying to speak. Can you hear me in the meeting? Yes, yes I can hear you, Amy. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I didn't have any um, items to report back on or follow ups from last week. So um, I have in the chat and I will click send momentarily. The um, mayor's um, October uh, newsletter, but there's a couple items in there that they highlighted, which includes um, the mayor's stance on enforcing public welfare laws with regard to the ACLU lawsuit against the city um, to prohibit the city from uh, enforcing laws that protect and safeguard the public with regard to homelessness. So um, that's uh, something you can read about in the newsletter. Additionally, um, information about Safe and Sound Waikiki, marking its first year of enforcement. Um, there's three different affordable housing complexes that are either in development or finished. Um, one is in development Parkway Village in Kapolei, Kihapai Place in Kailua is also under development, but um, Hale Waiolu in Chinatown has been finished. It's senior housing. So please check those out in the newsletter. Additionally, um, earlier this month was a fire prevention week and the HFD posted a lot of information on their Instagram account about that. 
And then finally, there was the update about Oahu's parking meters getting upgraded to the 4G meters. Um, most are done, but there's a few more that will be updated by the end of the year. And many of the earlier coin only meters will be upgraded shortly for this new system. And that is all the information I have. If there are other questions, I can take those back um, for next month. Questions for the mayor's representative. All right, nobody's raised their hand. I just would like to remind you for next month, if you could uh, let us know uh, the status of the hiring for the Boba Head shooting range. And also whether the funds for the Coca Crater Staples has been assigned into a city department for distribution. If you could follow up on that for us, appreciate There were no updates on any of those this time around, but uh, oh. hiring sure. at um, Cocoa Head Shooting Range and the Staples um, funding. Gotcha. All right. Thank you so much. Yep. Uh, in the meantime, before going on to the next item on our agenda, I'd like to acknowledge um, we had some problems hearing member Kim Collinsworth online, but she did put uh, her comment in the chat. So I'm going to ask Jeffrey to read her comment for the board members. Okay, uh, member Collins word, share the check. Absurdity, absurdity to have its built and especially degrading after being from Hawaiians regarding the ancestral name change back to Honolulu from Hawaii back. I'm speechless, literally disgusting. Hey, thanks Kim for waiting in. Um, and before we lose some of our audience, I just want to let the board members and some of our audience members know that um, one of the two things coming up next month on our agenda, that have your places on our agenda, is a consideration of park closure hours again for Drolumikala Beach and Malamua Bay. Um, we discussed this last month, and it seems like the prime number of uh, prime incidences at the shopping centers and um, has increased because of the houseless population in the beach park area. So the police have indicated that they can't do much unless there are closure hours. And so uh, this will be on the agenda for next month. And I'm also going to bring on the board agenda um, a draft letter to the neighborhood commission office about possibly converting some of our unfilled vacant seats to at large seats. Okay, so those two things will be coming up um, uh, next time. So, moving on to the next item on our agenda is a report from City Council Chair Tom Waters' office. Oh, one other thing, uh, Amy, uh, as the mayor's representative, could you also bring back? some information in terms of um, what beach parks have closure hours on our end of the island. Okay, what beach parks have closure hours on in East Oahu? Yes, thank okay. you. Sure. Okay, Representative from City Council Chair Tony Waters' office. Hello, great evening everyone. Amanda Zabella here for Council Chair Waters. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Amanda. Go ahead. Okay, great. Um, I just have a couple of updates. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know regarding the 7078 Camilo Street overgrown property. Um, I did speak to the homeowner a, a few weeks ago. Um, she is elderly. She's 86 years old. She did confirm with me that she does not live on the property. It's vacant. Um, and she just kind of explained that it's 
you know, her son didn't think it was safe for her to live there anymore um, at her age alone. And she's had some issues with um, trespassers, um, some crime in the area. She is trying to address the overgrowth. Um, she said she's been looking for a landscape company to clear the lot. She was apparently not aware that she has um, some pretty large city fines against her property. Um, and so she, I sent her some information and she's going to be looking at taking care of that as well. But she does not plan to, she does not plan to live in the property, nor does she plan to sell the property at this time. Um, I, I did just share with her the concerns that have been raised about, um, you know, safety, fire safety, uh, concerns regarding the overgrowth and um, I let her know to please reach back out to me if she is unable to find help with clearing the property and our office would be willing to um, you know reach out for a, a group of volunteers who might be willing to come together to help clear the property um, just you know for the for the but public benefit, um, essentially, we just want to make sure that the area is safe for the surrounding neighbors and uh, and properties. Um, so, um, I'll provide another update on that if I if I receive more information. Um, but as it stands, she does have over a million dollars of fines against her property, um, and she said that she's working on taking care of those things. Um, we were second issue. I just wanted to highlight was we're, you know, following up on the lighting issue, um, at Sandy beach with the turtles that have returned the hatchlings. Um, we've been following this. And so we were really happy to hear that, um, the city was able to turn off several of the lights around the park. Um, and those will continue to stay off. Um, until about mid November, December, and the hatchlings have uh, fledged from the, the nests. Um, the next update I have is just very brief. We, we, we received several concerns about a construction project, residential construction project at 880 Ka'ahui Street. Um, and we just wanted to update that Department of Planning and Permitting did conduct an investigation. The work there being done is currently in accordance with a valid building permit. There were no violations um, found at this time, including all the height, uh, height limits were all within approved limits. Um, there was also no current evidence of any short-term rental activity other than one Airbnb link that was provided by um, by a resident that was actually for a property owned by the same owner, but for a property in the Philippines. Um, so there was no evidence that DPP could find of any listings of any illegal short-term rentals uh, for this property um, here in Hawaii. Um, so that's that. And then I did share some information with Chair Mayor just to just briefly highlight American Water, American, excuse me, Hawaii American Water um, provided a, a, an update on a project that will be commencing in the beginning of January. This is for the reconstruction of the private wastewater pump station number two at four. 546 Kauai High Street. Um, that is expected to impact traffic beginning January 2024 for approximately 10 months. Um, and so Hawaii American Water did distribute um, packets of information to neighbors um, on Kauai Ha'e from Hakalau Place to Hawaii Kai Drive. And then all of, um, excuse me, I think it's Halakalau place. Um, 
the manager there at Hawaii American Water is Lee Mansfield. Um, I do have his contact information should anybody um, want or need it. Happy to put it in the chat as well. And the last issue I wanted to highlight um, was just regarding a Department of Transportation Services response to Representative Jean Ward regarding um, Kamehameha Drive and Mauna Nani Street intersection. But I do see that he's online, so I'll, I'll let him share more about that response from the DTS. Um, and with that, I, I don't have anything else to report. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you, Amanda. Are there questions for uh, City Council Chair and County Waters' office? No questions, Amanda. Thank you very much for that update. Great. Thank you. Governor Josh. Okay. Governor Josh means representative, Mike Buck. Thanks for staying late, Mike. Uh, I must have been. I was on my way home from the airport. I know all day. Now I look at the package of this stuff because I actually forgot to meet. I thought it was next week. Oh, I got a So I don't have any of those in my head. So bear with me. I'll give you a lot of money with regards to some concerns that some of you had about the homelessness and the problems. I don't have any of uh, there were 40 people in the immediate area. There are now 35. It was 30, but five new ones showed up. So these people are the ones that are figuring out with the ACLU and others where they can put their feet. And uh, it's not going to work for them. So that being said, Mayor is uh, contemplating litigation from the city to the ACLU to tell them to stop in the middle of all this. I also wanted to point out one of the other um, neighborhood boards that I write, heard on from the governor is uh, Wildlife Kalalo. Uh, and I don't know if any of you have heard of this group. It's called the uh, Kalalo Diamond Head Neighborhood Security Watch. And I know that there have been in the past, because I've been on them here in our neighborhood, different organizations. This is an unbelievable thing. I would like to ask your permission to maybe bring them next month uh, because they have incite numbers instead of what we have police here sometimes. They, they deserve this or that. They have here theft and largely burglary, vehicle breakings, and theft assault and vandalism. And they have a lot of them. So these guys are doing something. They have Little uh, outfits they wear, they walk around the place and they make it. Right? So I think it would be a great idea either to foster something like that right here uh, or something else. And then some of you had approached me earlier today. I got to tell you that right now is a great time going into the holidays to get the administration's gear on things to bother you. But there's one thing I want to let you know it's as clear as I can be, writing things down is you. Why don't do your thing and tell, tell people what you want? Um, if it's not in writing, it doesn't exist, and I want to help you. If you can give problems to me in writing, I'll give you a first lead. It's microbuckhawaii at gmail.com. Um, now is a great time to do it. And I know this, uh, some of you, like her, some, some of you had uh, things that you wanted to directly say when I got up. Uh, one of them was about a problem on the eighth one. It is a uh, it is a danger to automobiles. We're going to have somebody from the Department of Transportation look at that as soon as possible. I get at the bottom. There's some people that are a little bit concerned about um, where it is and what it's doing automobiles. As a matter of fact, uh, there's a couple of people that said there are buildings that come out. A couple of them said the department are now no longer in line because they get exposed. Uh, and, and, uh, I saw a report on the screen earlier, and um, I hope he's going to get to this. Uh, it's been decided now that Sunday, November the 5th, at the Hawaii State uh, Capitol Auditorium uh, Party is the celebration of the life of Sunday San Sloan. So for those of you that want to know more about this, go to Rev Ward, uh, and, and he will give you an opportunity. In the meantime, uh, there's another thing. Uh, I have left some comments at Kealaho, which is the governor's letter. There's a lot of fraud right now 
people that are trying to make people feel good about giving, know who you're giving to. Right on the back of the, uh, the governor's newsletter for this month, you can have one with copy if you want. Are the, are the folks that have been vetted out as honest and sincere where this money is going? Um, and with that being said, uh, some of you have some questions I know. Uh, I hope, and I also want to let you know that there's a really good opportunity now between DLNR and DI Department of Investment Relations and, and DLNR. Now's the time to talk to them about this concern of the Kuna, the EBA, everything in this area. I cannot agree. I, I heard a lot of stuff that makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. The smartest thing to come out of this is why are you avoiding Kai Tyson? And I, I think it is so generous of you to agree that you would share us. I think the holds it. I hope that the, the amount of concern from the past is we cannot go forward without looking at the best, with the atrocities, and the things that we've done to each other. And, uh, you know, I'm five generations back and, and still being told, hey, you know, you're not one of us. Well, yes, I am. 16, that's enough. Not quite enough to go to many as I'm so sorry I want to put all but I mean, I want to have a different choice. Anyway, uh, that's it. What, is, what do you want to take me back? In the meantime, if you put it in writing, I'll make it happen. It's as simple as that. I talk to you at gmail.com. You can email me something in the next couple of weeks on the next month meeting you'll have an answer. Any questions for right now? Questions for the mayor's, I mean, governor's representative. And yes, Carol. We used to be enemies, but I'm not a regular mayor. I was going to be one. Uh, I just wanted to follow up on what I asked earlier as far as Saturday's race across the city. And is that something that Speak. Yeah, I, uh, yes, and send it to me in writing, send me an email. I'll get in touch with somebody at DLNR and ask these people, look, a lot of people are upset, not what, what you're doing, but where you're doing. So why don't we move 10 or 15 feet to this side and you're not going to piss anybody off? Okay, so I mean, now, and I also think somebody was it uh, Malia who said that somebody's going to be there on a Saturday. Okay. They need to be told, you know, maybe some volunteers, anybody that comes to check it out, say, hey, look, we're not happy with this. And there is already a provision, maybe too late, but there already is a provision, right, in the original deal that it could be canceled or changed to move. We'll see if we can make that happen. And, and what I would do is tomorrow, when I get in, which would be early, I'll get in touch with somebody and tell an hey, can hey, what can be done? It's, it's, I know it's kind of late. Shame on us, but this would be it, but it's not the right thing. Thanks, Mike. That would be great if you could weigh in on that. Any other questions for the governor's representative? Let me all be Yes, we are letting you all be seated What is what was that? Send that as a high Oh, yeah, do that. And I'll get you next. I'll do that fixed. Is there a representative from Senator Stanley Chang's office online? No. Is there a representative from Senator Christie's office? No. Representative Jane Warren, are you still there online? Aloha, Madam Chair. I am still online and I regret not being with you. I, I can't tell you how much meaningful it is to be in person versus being remote. I really sympathize for those who can only do remote because it, it's really not the same. Having said that, let me brief. Uh, by the way, Madam Chair, I came earlier and dropped off the uh, report. Did you get it? It was at the podium at about uh, three o'clock this afternoon. Did you distribute it? Yes, we did. It's okay, good. Okay. Oh, 
Thank you very much for that. Uh, on page one, uh, a very important issue following the downtown hall about streets, safe streets in Hawaii Kai, DTS has come up with the idea of road dieting. Now that sounds really cute, road dieting. But what is proposed and where we really need to give feedback to the DTS is they want to take Hawaii Kai Drive from Honolulu Bay all the way to Kealoha and make it a three lane, not a, it's a four lane now. They want to do two lanes, i.e. in opposite direction and have a center left turn lane. As you know, this is very popular on the mainland. You've got people going <clears throat> in opposite directions and then you, if you want to turn, you go into this middle lane, which if you're not turning, you don't use. I'm not convinced the whole of Hawaii Kai Drive has to do that. This was, if you would call, premised by the speeding at the Camilo Iki School going up and down Hawaii Kai Drive between Kalama Valley and Little Little Home Road. Uh, maybe sections of it, but uh, for the whole thing, I just would plead with everybody to take the survey as indicated on the bottom right, where you can just do the QR code, QR code, and do the survey. And think about what it would mean to have Waikai Drive just one lane going in one direction, one lane going the opposite direction, and then having a turn lane in the middle. Also on page one is a reminder of the Beer Summit. We have, for the first time ever, we have a judge coming to speak to Waikai, and it's Judge Foley. It's all about the standards of conduct uh, improvement that he uh, championed with the commission and put in 31 bills to improve the conduct of the legislature. Now, the latest report says we have an 18% approval rating at the legislature. So you can see we've got a bit of room to approve and, and to increase, and he's gonna talk about that. And it's gonna be on the first Thursday, as it always is with the Drew Summit. And this is November 2nd, 6 p.m. Change of venue, we are at the Oahu Club. Alvin Flanagan has been so community-minded, uh, and it's such a beautiful place to have a meeting. Going on quickly to page two, it's simply a review of the former uh, uh, Beer Summit speakers, uh, Blake Oshiro, the governor's senior advisor. He spoke on a number of issues, as well as in the last uh, Beer Summit, we had uh, Representative Cochran, who represents Lahaina, who gave some really <clears throat> shocking stories about what happened on August 8th and the Maui fires. If you want to view those, they are at the bottom. You can click on the QR codes and they are available to you. Speaking of fire on the third page, it's the survey that my office has been taking. If people see fire hazard or open space and things that look like they're hazardous, dangerous, uh, please report that we are making a map which is increasing, which would be in addition to the map that's are already out there. And I want to shout out a, a kudo to Kamehameha Schools when we first reported in front of the post office, which was a, a what would you call it, a very dangerous uh, fire prone area. Within days, they had it just pristine in terms of its uh, landscape uh, and virtually no danger whatsoever. So Kamehameha Schools, good job. Up on Marinage Ridge, there's a lot more concern that we have is, as we all know, Kamehameha Schools is the biggest landowner still in Hawaii Kai. <clears throat> Following on uh, page three is a reminder of the KV run, a reminder of the Beer Summit, and a reminder of the Hawaii Kai Christmas Parade coming up very, very soon. Very popular ideas in uh our community. And lastly, and probably most importantly, it's a call to celebrate the life of Senator Sam Sloan. And Mike Buck is going to be the MC. Thank you, Mike, for mentioning that. Uh, it's very important being that he did represent us in this community for 20 years in the Senate. And he is the Lone Ranger for his last ride into the sunset. I should mention that the governor or his representative will be there. Senator Kim will be there speaking. Also, uh, former Congresswoman uh, Colleen Hanabusa and a number of other people are going to be writing uh, tributes to the good senator. So it's a good way to send off. And I should remind, as I have always, in his will, he said, everybody who comes to this event shall receive a kosher hot dog and a Pepsi. That's, that's his favorite drink and his favorite dog. Uh, we're working with Costco trying to work that out. So anybody who comes, 
November 5th, that Sunday, and it's at the Hawaii State Capitol Auditorium, which means we can come one, come all, it'll hold maybe 250 people, and we will have in the caucus rooms the hot dogs and the Pepsis. So please join us. It's it's a great day for a great man, and it's giving honor where honor is due. And that's the last roundup, and that's my report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Ford. Are there any questions for Representative? Yes, sir. Parking for a cloud phone. Yeah, we're working with the sheriff's office to open downstairs and have because <laughs> Not too many, if any, ever are legislators working on Sunday. So we're hoping to come into the whole parking lot, but stay tuned. We will announce that if it's not uh, available, we will have something close by. At the farthest, it would be Herb on the the Ali parking, which is next to the old Mandalay restaurant, which you know on Alakea Street, you go up, it's a city parking. And they got three stories of parking, so it shouldn't be a problem. And if anybody has a problem with mobility, they can be dropped off at the rotunda, go through the glass doors, and it's the downstairs, uh, right in front of uh, the glass doors, is where the auditorium is. So it'll hold up to 250 people. So come one and come all. Thank you for the question. Any other questions for the representative? Okay, thank you, very much, Representative Ward. Thank you, Chair. And I don't think I'll do a, a a remote long distance again. I like being there eyeball to eyeball with you guys. Thank you. Now I've got to go to Maui early in the morning, so that's another reason why I'm going to sign off. Otherwise, I'm usually with you guys till the very end. So aloha right. and good night. Good night to you too. Is there someone from Representative Mark Hashem's office? None. Are there any representatives from our congressional offices? None. We're going to be moving on to board business. The first item is an update on the Coconut shooting range. And as indicated by the mayor's representative in the last slide, there is no current update. We hope to have an update at next month's meeting. Update on Coco Crater Stables. Is there an update? Either from her or Kim Collinsworth. If not, we hope to hear more on that at our November meeting. Update on Kahibi State Scenic Shoreline. I want to remind the board members that I did send a letter to the Department of Land and Natural Resources. And for the members of the audience, I'm going to read part of the letter so that you are aware of what we did send to um, the Department of Land and Natural Resources. The Hawaii Pioneer of the War has long worked to protect and preserve the lands of the Pahiti Coast and thus have been strong supporters of Senate Bill 1254, now Act 235, whose purpose is to enhance the Mamalua Makuhu Scenic Byway and to protect and preserve the lands of the Pee Coast, Malva to Makai, in perpetuity by establishing the Pee Coast State Park for the proper protection and management of the area. The second paragraph reads, however, the public is familiar with the Pee State Scenic Shoreline nomenclature as originally set forth in the Pepe State Park Master Plan and Final Environmental Impact Statement dated April 1996. The Hawaii Pine Neighborhood Board recommends that the main and signage for the area remain as is, as there is no necessity to place new signage with a new name to identify the shoreline. We contend that a scenic shoreline provides a very different mindset versus a state park as to the types of activities that might occur in these special areas. At its September 26 meeting, the whole API neighborhood board agreed to send this letter to explain our position. So as you can see, 
uh, our whole discussion about a possible race this Saturday um, is a kind of activity that may not be appropriate for our scenic shoreline. So that is one reason we want the nomenclature to remain the same. So I did follow up on that letter and um, we continue to monitor the state scenic shoreline and uh, we still get generally sends us monthly newsletters about their third Sunday cleanup. Update on Camino Noy Valley Agriculture. Um, I think that we did receive an update through our presentation from the Cabernet Schools Pomaloa Management Team. And um, it is good to know that there is some movement on the sewer replacement and design. And because I know that that's going to be affecting the farmers uh, in that area. So I'm sure we'll hear more about that. We have not heard an update on the early morning hikers at Cocoa District Park. So we do need to follow up on whether that solar block actually has been purchased. It was going to be purchased, we were told at our last meeting. So we want to know if it has been purchased and when it will be installed. Now, not on the agenda, but a couple of things that I want to follow up with the board about. The holiday parade that's going to be held the Friday after Thanksgiving, the board had considered participating. However, this year, so many of our board members are not able to participate because of travel and other commitments. So we will not participate this year. But certainly, please think about it for next year. We'd like to have a good turnout for next year. And um, last month, we talked about establishing a website. And I'd like Elijah to speak about what he has developed and where we can find it, Elijah, so if you want to take a look at it. Um, I made a free website. I think it's whatinkindevents.my.canva.site because I did not want to pay for a domain yet. I also have a Google Calendar, which I posted the link on next door. Um, and it has events that I can find online, things that people told me about. But if anyone has anything else to share that would make the public to be um, aware of, either volunteer opportunities for community events open to the public, um, please email me at elijah.v.9826 at gmail.com. Thank you. I think it's what you call events. Dot... Um, what you call Elijah, yes. check um, Representative Ward's. Third page. Is this the um, the link on the third page? Should right above his picture. The third one. Is that the third one? Probably the third one at the bottom. Oh, yes, that is it. So, whatkind of events.my.canva.site. Thank you, Elijah. So, everybody take a look at that. The, uh, maybe we can bring it back up. I'll, I'll put it on the agenda for next month for us to take another look at it. Sam, you have a comment? Thank you. Um, yeah, since we have this renewed, I would say, I would like to review it as a renaissance of how we're viewing the land here in Kaunalua, as well as the, the nomenclature, the, the, uh, the meaning behind why we. We have areas named certain things. And so looking at our neighborhood board being named the Hawaii Thai neighborhood board, uh, I would like to see what the board's thoughts are on changing that name to the, the original place of the Malalua neighborhood board um, and starting that process with the neighborhood commission in alignment with uh, the vision that community schools has for all the other name changes um, and, and bring it back to its, to its originality. Okay, I'll put it on the future agenda. Okay, thanks. All right, moving on. Uh, are there any reports from our board committees? Huh? All right, approval of the regular meeting minutes. Are there any revisions? I do have a couple.
that I need to bring to the board's attention. Um, on page one, um, under board members present, Felix's last name is misspelled. It should be K R O T T after the hyphen. And on page two, under community announcements, apologies to Hui Nalu. The first line where it says run and walk, Carol Jackson with Hui Nalu Canoe Club. All right, we had the wrong Canoe Club. This is their apologies, Carol. And uh, we're going to delete the last sentence in this paragraph because the event is not sponsored by Mayor Schools. So that was uh, put in in the way. Oh, it was not in her presentation. I think that information Juliet picked up off the flight because there was a logo in the upper right corner. So we're going to take out that uh, second, uh, excuse me. We're going to take out that last sentence that says this event is sponsored by Kamehameha Schools, so delete that. Okay, so those are my two revisions. Are there any other revisions to the minutes? The name of the committee in the property? Ale, oh, excuse me. Hui Nalu. H-U-I-N-A-L-U. Two words. Any other revisions? If not, the minutes are accepted as amended. Any other board announcements? Now I'm going to be going into the closing announcements. And before I do that, I want to thank again Mr. Gu of Apatione Elementary School who was able to provide us with this public address system so that um, we were able to provide, I think, a very viable workaround. And the, uh, although, the minute, although the meeting was not a videotape by Olevo, Olevo will screen and broadcast this recorded version of the meeting. So all of the presentations will be able to be seen by the public. All right, the next regular meeting of the Hawaii Pine Neighborhood Board is Tuesday, November 28th, 7 p.m. at Pahati Yoni Elementary School Cafeteria and on WebEx. Hawaii Pine Neighborhood Board regular meetings are being cast on Oleno Channel 49 on the second Monday of the following month at 9 p.m. and repeating on that month's third Friday at 7 a.m. The videos can also be seen online at olelo.org slash olelonet or on the homolulu.gov slash mco slash boards for the video archive. So I want to thank everyone online and those in our, in our present audience. Thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, I wish you all happy Halloween and a happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you at the end of November. Meeting is adjourned.